Well, I did work for Greenpeace for my first decade out of college um, back in the 1980s. It was an incredible training ground. Traveled around the world, learned from some of the best organizers and campaigners that are there. After a decade, I went and did a whole bunch of other things. I worked with some more grassroots groups. I worked with some environmental funders. I made the Story of Stuff film and then worked with the Story of Stuff project. Um, when the opportunity came to return to Greenpeace, I thought very hard about that. Um, partly because I really loved the Story of Stuff project and I didn't want to leave it. And in fact, when Greenpeace called and asked me if I would be interested in this project, I said, one thing is I don't want to move to Washington, D.C. They said, you don't have to. You can work in San Francisco. That was good. And then I said, I don't want to leave the Story of Stuff project. The Story of Stuff project is really special. It is innovative. You know, because it is small, it can try new things and experiment and innovate in a way that a big organization can't. It's an incredibly rich learning lab and has a really special community of a, almost a million people that has grown up around these films that stay in touch through the internet. I didn't want to leave that and I was thrilled that Greenpeace said, you don't have to leave Story of Stuff. So I'm still on the board of Story of Stuff and Greenpeace and Story of Stuff are thinking up some really exciting collaborations ahead. But the main reason that I thought about coming back to Greenpeace is that Greenpeace has grown and evolved so much since I was there almost 18 years ago. Greenpeace's idea of what true sustainability means is so much broader. Social justice is now actually in the mission statement of Greenpeace. Greenpeace no longer works on environment as some abstract thing in a vacuum, but really sees environment and social justice as absolutely integrated. So it's formally in the mission statement. That's a huge step forward. Greenpeace has embraced a very serious diversity and inclusion program within the organization. So when I walk around the halls of the organization, it looks a lot different than it did 20 years ago. But not just internally, externally. We are working with diverse communities um, from the Arctic to Los Angeles. It is incredible to see Greenpeace evolve and become much more of a people's organization. We're also really working to engage our members much more. In the old days, the way it worked to be a Greenpeace member is you'd send Greenpeace $20 a month and that was it. You'd sort of outsource your getting involved to Greenpeace, and then Greenpeacers would go do cool stuff on your behalf. The new way that Greenpeace is working is inviting all of our members to join us in doing cool things. You can't outsource your activism to us. You actually need to be involved. So you've signed up, now it's time to show up. And we have a fabulous new platform to engage people to do this. It's called Greenwire. Through Greenwire, Greenpeace supporters all over the country can find each other on campuses, in neighborhoods, at churches, at schools, all over, connect and either plug into Greenpeace campaigns or start your own campaigns. So I'm very excited about the broader understanding of what environmental solutions look like to include social justice and the broader understanding of the movement building it's going to take to be able to win on these issues.